Because apparently we live in a world where characters need to have trauma to be interesting. Why is romance so wrapped in trauma? Stop that. Thank God. People handle your trauma. Handle your trauma. Get a therapist. That's what we learned in today's video. Get a therapist, please. It's come to my attention that I have no idea how I'm doing with my reading challenge for this year or anything related to Goodreads. Uh, today is gonna be a chill video. I'm trying to bring fall vibes even though it's literally 85 degrees in like LA and the AC is a blowing. So don't mind that noise. Lately I have been cranking out really long vlogs and I have been really enjoying you guys' reaction to them but I haven't done a wrap up in a while. What's going on? So let's let's figure it out. Let's. I'm gonna pull all the books and let's talk about them. I have to find them first and also recall. Oh, I, since I vlog so often, I just have to look at my other videos. Okay, one second. I thought it'd be more than this. <laughs> okay, let's spill the beans on all the books that I disliked, liked, DNF'd, unhauled. We're gonna get into it. Though this stack looks very small, I actually did unhaul many a book and also I read some mangas. I'm gonna go in chronological order from the books I read in June, then July, and then August. So it's not in order of how much I like or dislike, though you will see the books that I dislike because <laughs> I'll say it with my chest whether or not I like it. So let's get into it. The first book that started the craze of reading vlogs that I were blowing up on my channel for some reason. I don't know what happened. I think it's because She's a thick book. She's a big girl. And that is Priory of the Orange Tree. I always want to say priority, but it's Priory. This is an epic fantasy written by Samantha Shannon, who also wrote The Bone Season, a bunch of other series. So she's, she's used to her epic fantasy, you know? So she just went wild with this book. It's 800 pages. She's super thick, but she's also very exciting and fun. I gave this book a four star. If you were looking for a sapphic romance, I wouldn't recommend this because i think a lot of people say it's sapphic grab it go um it there's some sapphic romance in here that brings a lot of tension to the plot but it also relies on the fact that like they cannot be together for the majority of the book and i'm like i don't want to spoil anything for y'all but i feel like a lot of people are like sapphic romance we're here for it but it's still used as a tool of oppression if that makes sense that it's like not an accepted thing so i just want to give you a heads up if you expected to see lots of romance on the page nah there's lots of dragons fighting bloodshed murder assassin attempts yada yada romance on the back burner and for our queer characters it's on the back back burner <laughs> you know what i mean so i just had to say that first and foremost i did really like the world building and the plots the assassination attempts i thought this was a pretty well paced book for its size i wasn't bored at any point the only thing is it did take like 150 pages for me to care a lot for the characters because there's like six perspectives in this book <laughs> Samantha got real excited with the the plot device of P of multiple POVs. You know what I mean? So, be forewarned, it takes a while for the plots, the, the, the POVs to really take off and get exciting. I also just really love when a fantasy series plays on misinterpretation of religion or just like Oh, I don't want to spoil anything, but I love stories that utilize like religion and beliefs as a way to like manipulate people. Fun times! I really did enjoy it. I do want to reread it and annotate it just because it's just, it was a fun, fun time. I would love a sequel where we can actually see our sapphic characters thrive together in peace and harmony, but you know that's probably asking for too much. The next book, A Little Life. We all know her. We've all heard of her. <laughs> um, so, I was doing reading sprints this past Sunday and someone commented the most genius thing where it's like, this is one of their favorite books, but they would never recommend it to someone. Here, here, that is so, so correct. I enjoyed this book 
for very personal reasons because as an artist myself as an actor i really related to the conversations about art sacrificing yourself being lost in the career how to be determined or how to have faith in oneself there was that conversation but then there was also the conversation about sexual intentions in a relationship what is love uh, as an asexual person i was really jiving with what is expected of you when you are in a romantic relationship so all of those plot points and just really deep introspection on life friendship and love i uh, like agreed with a lot of it i ended up annotating a lot of it i do disagree with <laughs> so much like this is trauma dumping so again i love what that person said in the live show i wouldn't really recommend this to anyone because it's fictional but i do feel like this is just a story that is about pain and like just for pain's sake if that makes sense there's just so much trauma dumping so no i wouldn't recommend it and i knew going into it that there was going to be a lot of trauma so i was ready for it i personally just love the introspection but everyone else i could see them getting so bored of the monologuing and then the trauma dumping after the monologuing i get it but if you like the discussion of life in a very somber way i think you would enjoy the introspection i think that's what i enjoyed from it but again this was just a four star this is not a new favorite <laughs> i actually don't think i recommend this to most people i don't think it's necessary for love no books are necessary honestly but like she really not necessary she is extra painful for no good reason and as an actor i also feel like this is a book that would be enjoyable because you're kind of trying to understand how people function and why are they causing so much pain and to themselves and what what blah, 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 the mystery of like why does he do this so i feel like if you're a creative person who likes to understand people and human nature in a very fictional place which i think also made me feel a little bit better reading this i'm like it's all fictional even though it could have happened to someone it the the trauma dumping is so specific so i'm like maybe not but who knows um but yeah that's those are my thoughts on a little life <laughs> intense intense both again i have vlogs if you want more thoughts on those okay i think moving on to july i read so many mangas in july but first let's talk about the book that i dnf'd um which is currently on sale on pangobooks.com if you are interested in living in the u.s i'll link it down below my little bookshop online shop match made in mahindi which has been on my tbr for a very long time it's supposed to be a very cute contemporary romance and i agree very cute but like just like a three star like nothing special this is a girl and she likes to do like the the henna tattoos mahindi and she is going to the school and she's bullied by this really popular girl since like her first year of high school she's a sophomore now so she's trying to level up and she decides to create this dating app with her brother who's like super smart and techie and she uses the matchmaking skills that run in her family to create this app and things go awry the plot is so fun and i do also think there's like a love triangle in here and there's a lot of fun characters and there is a queer character there's a lot of to enjoy about this story but i feel like YA contemporary just isn't hasn't been hitting for me very much lately just because i was like this is cute but i didn't i didn't vibe with the main character like there's like no reason for me not to love this story besides the fact that it just like right now YA contemporary i feel like isn't hitting as hard as i want it to except for one that i will talk about very soon i feel like i'm just I don't know i don't know i don't know how to explain my mood my reading mood has been trash lately and i don't know and i need to figure it out because i'm a reader i need to read but like what do i read that doesn't disappoint because this was a little disappointing i was th i thought it would be like my new fave contemporary and it was just okay life is hard i'm just kidding it's not it's just reading taste <laughs> i'm figuring out what books match my reading taste next we have mangas i read first I read all the volumes for Strobe Edge, which is this very cute YA romance, which is so funny, I was just shit talking a, a YA contemporary. But for some reason, mangas, even though they are so innocent, so sweet, nearly the same trope in every manga where it's like the girl is soft spoken and not like other girls and there's a popular guy and he suddenly falls interested in this 
plain girl. S where explains nearly all the shoujo mangas I have ever read and it does explain also Strobe Edge. There's a little bit more fun quirkiness to Strobe Edge because basically the storyline is she ended up liking this guy who doesn't like her back for most of the volume so she's trying to deal with compartmentalizing her crush and it's very just the, the tension is so good. I think that's what mangas do best. Shoujo, romantic, like rom com -y mangas. They just, ah, they give you tension. They give you angst, but not in like the sweetest, cutest form. I think Strobe Edge was really, really cute. Highly recommend if you want just a cute rom com -y manga. Next manga series I started but did not finish <laughs> was Shortcake. It was kind of cute. She ends up living in this dormitory for school with these other boys. One of the boys like her and then one of the guys is like a, a avid reader and I think she likes the avid reader but then the guy who likes her she doesn't like back and I read three volumes and I kind of gave up because I just didn't like it. I wasn't enjoying myself. I gave it three volumes. I gave it enough time and then I DNF the series because I'm like I don't care who she ends up with. I don't really like her very much. <laughs> okay, so then we're diving into the romances because that was my next big video. And I tried to read a lot of romance for it, which I successfully did and successfully unhauled a ton of those romances. And then one I didn't need to purchase, thankfully, now I know. Now I know I'm not, I don't like her. Me and her, we don't agree. And that is normal people, which I'd love to say that I hate and like totally despised and gave one star. Honestly, I gave it two stars. I don't hate it, I just dislike it because I feel like it is like a little life. I don't know why, but from what I've seen on social media, it's been pitched to me as a romance. It is not a romance. Don't even, mm -mm, mm -mm, nothing is cute. Nothing is cute about normal people. These are two people who have kind of, one girl, has a very traumatic past, lives in an abusive family, um, feels ostracized at school. But again, I hate when books do that, but they don't give us like a good reason besides the fact that she's smart and I guess plain looking. Like, that's such a tropey thing to be like, she's so plain and smart and we hate her. And there was a mean girl dishing out stuff to her in high school and yada yada, but she falls in love with this guy. And they end up dating, having a fling in high school and then it dies. It, it not in a good way high school period of time was trash but then for some reason they go off to college and just shit gets worse eating disorders and self-harm and oh just a lot of pain and oh but what makes me so mad is that at least with a little life when the characters were behaving in a way the rhetoric in the novel was trying to introspect why am I acting this way? Why does this hurt? Why is my reaction not eating? Why is this and that? Okay, in normal people there's none of that. And I guess that is, I mean, I guess the young adult way of maybe handling issues is just you power through and then you maybe stop eating or something, which, eh. But then what I dislike most about the book is like the male character goes, is this a spoiler? Okay, this might be a little bit of a spoiler, so I'll put a little time card here if you want to skip ahead or if you want to hear my thoughts. Stay right here, baby. Let's talk about it. I disliked that the male character, he went to therapy, he started taking antidepressants, he's like working hard on himself, and now he wants to travel. This is the end of the book. He wants to travel and, you know, learn more about the world. Our main character, the girl, who has is now out of a little bit more out of an abusive circumstance, She's just like, I don't believe him, I love him, yada yada, I'm still like, still inflicting self-harm on herself, still wanting harm to be done to her. She's like, okay, I guess he'll leave, like, I don't know. There's like zero growth on her part. And I was just like so mad. Cause it's like, why did I read this whole book about her being so self-destructive for her to get nowhere? Like, at least the male character had some growth, but I did not, I did not enjoy I did not enjoy the book. I don't think it, you're supposed to enjoy the book. I just thought it was an okay story. Like it was a really, it was like trauma dumping, but no introspection. So I do I, I didn't enjoy it. I mean, technically I guess it's more like a three star book, but I didn't enjoy the writing, didn't enjoy the plot, didn't enjoy the character arcs. So it's getting a two for me. It's getting a two for me, sis. I don't recommend it. <laughs> I do not recommend. Oh, the next book, the romance that saved it all. Again, don't, I'm not classing normal people as romance. Mm. I just, I 
I thought it was from what I've heard on the internet. No more. Now I know better. <laughs> now it's in the category with a little life. But the trauma dumping genre, apparently. But the romance that saved that vlog and saved my little heart was You Had Me at Hola by Alexis de Aria. Uh, this is such a sweet little book. This book is an adult romance. Oh, she's steamy at the 50% mark. It hits hard. If you watch the vlog, you saw my reaction. Oh. But um, we followed two actors, one who came from a telenovela background and then another who came from a soap opera background. They come together to make a very Latinx TV show called Carmen, Carmen on Demand? Carmen, Carmen something. But basically, right before the show starts, our main leading lady gets dumped by this rock star and it's very dramatic. It's like in the tabloids for some reason and they're trashing her and saying like she's desperate and yada yada. So she decides that she's no longer going to be dating and she's going to try her best to be the leading lady who is respectful and only cares about her career. But it all falls apart when she meets her new co-star who's a, a hot daddy quite literally. <laughs> and I just really enjoyed the conversation about acting. It's you know hardships of how you have to sacrifice love and romance oh, I love the conversation of wanting a good career and balancing it with love that's all our main character wants she wants to be loved and she has so much love to give and I just love that and then we also had some trauma happen with the male character which is I know very typical for romance but at least he's handling it he starts to handle it in the book which thank god people handle your trauma handle your trauma get a therapist that's what we learned in today's video. Get a therapist, please. There's a lot of discussion on family and love and also just shouting out the Latinx community. I really, really enjoyed all of it. This book made me laugh. It nearly made me cry at the end, which was very shocking because there was this little twist that I didn't see coming and it was just so, so sweet. So I highly recommend if you're looking for a fun de la novela soapy romance, you had me at hola. It's just, it's perfect. It's so sweet and so butterflies. All of the, all the, it just makes you feel so good inside. Next romance I unhold because it was a three star for me and it was circling back to you, which has the most stunning cover. I did already sell it on my Pingo Books account. She sold out so fast. She was like, okay, snatch. One of you guys were like, okay, thank you. It was a cute office romance, friends to lovers. Basically, they end up having to do a business trip together and they hook up and then things go awry because the main girl who is very career oriented and she is grieving the loss of her mother she's kind of it's just not the perfect time to start a budding romance but what i love is that the guy in this book is determined to communicate so clearly and be like what do you want where do you want to go yada yada it was such a cute read so if you like office romances i would highly recommend i thought it was so well put together and they're both very snarky characters which i love but i did personally give it a three star and i don't want to collect books just to collect them anymore so i did unhaul it the next book i unhauled and dnf because your girl just didn't want it i didn't want any more trauma okay i had enough trauma in my typical romance vlog i'm like why is romance so wrapped in trauma stop that it's not attractive <laughs> the next book i picked up was a talia hibbert book which I'm not, I'm, I'm no longer reading Talia Hibbert Brooks. I don't, I don't trust her. She has, she has effed me up one too many times. So me and her were on speaking terms. Okay. Okay. I read The Roommate Risk, which is one of my favorite tropes, which is having to live with someone you are romantically attracted to, sexually attracted to, whatever it is. But when you're trapped in a room with someone, I'm like, ooh, the tension is so high. <sighs> the Roommate Risk basically follows this girl who is best friends with this guy she went to college with they hooked up but then she's like oh i don't do dating so he's like okay let's just be friends they end up like being best friends for eight years and he's wildly in love with her the whole time mind you so he's just like i'll take being your friend i'll settle for that but i love you on the down low which isn't that down low it's pretty obvious. The reason why she doesn't want to date is because of her trauma of her parents abandoning her. So she's like, I don't want love. I got probably 80% of the way through this book and was just over it. The tension just wasn't there. I do not understand why they weren't dating because like at some point she mentioned, she's like, but I don't want to lose you as a friend. Okay, sis, but like 
y'all are fucking <laughs> what is you've crossed the line what in what is what what the guy had to deal with so much because he's obviously in love with her which is also really sketchy to me to be in a relationship with a best friend but also be pining after them romantically that's not sexy to me i don't like that like really gross and creepy like if you actually just want to be friends with someone and they are secretly like <laughs> in the corner no no not cute not romantic i don't know but she's like all about it i guess she she likes playing with people's feelings like that i don't know not me not i it was not romantic and there was no tension because we know we, there's chemistry and they like each other but they're just not dating right now because she's not about that right now whatever didn't like the protagonist the main girl she just was just super hot and super charming but like where I want to see it on the page. There's there's just issues from both angles because where's the charisma? Don't see it. Um, sir, why are you still befriended someone who already isn't interested? Like, what's... <laughs> Dina. Dina. I don't care. I don't care. Okay. Ah, and the last romance that I read. Oh, which also, thank you. Thank you. Because it talked about trauma, but it also talked about it in such a beautiful way this is so well written i was surprised it was so short it's open water in case i'm like i don't know if i'm saying the titles i just feel like i'm high energy right now bah, bah, bah. here are my thoughts bah, 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 bah. this was a five star yummy snack it is 150 pages very short but so impactful you know it talks about life and i feel like how the metaphor of open water being in life and just literally out in open water like feeling like sometimes you're almost gonna drown but also feeling like connected to the world and really free but then also the constant fear of drowning because <laughs> it's like something bad could happen and just talking about black life the constant fears like i didn't expect it to go into black life in the black trauma they just they talked about it so much and i really enjoyed that narrative i also underlined so many beautiful things except here you must unfold your arms and from your chest say you are tired oh, there's just so many beautiful lines in this book and it starts off as this really interesting romance between this guy and a girl and the girl does have a boyfriend so it starts off as a friendship but they obviously have attraction and they later maybe start a relationship but then also i don't i don't want to spoil anything but it just there's so many twists and turns and i think this book really talks about love and the sense of how to be open and vulnerable when you are going through so much when life is so hard when it feels so heavy it talked about so much and more so i could not recommend this enough it was it's so good it's definitely romantic for like 80 pages and then it gets real serious just go into it if you like lyrical writing because the writing is immaculate like people say normal people's well written and tea open water is like open verse poetic mm, yummy the last book i have read recently is silent kai by christina forrest christina forrest is one of my favorite ya contemporary authors she's the best i literally did a live show about this book with her on my channel ah, so excited i this book is so good i don't know why like most other books why contemporaries as of late have not been hitting but this hit from the first page i cared deeply about these two cute beings so both have trauma just letting you know because apparently we live in a world where characters need to have trauma to be interesting no shade no tea on the authors but that's just how it's feeling as of late the trauma is a necessary factor of interest question mark <sighs> one day maybe not this book jumps from present to past in the present these two are freaking missing on their like senior ski trip they're missing and they have broken up and everyone's wondering what the f is happening then we go to the past where we see their relationship unfold the, how they work together at this little carnival and it's just so cute she wants to go to fashion school he is an athlete if i recall correctly but they both have some trauma she's dealing with her parents divorce and not really believing in love because she saw what her parents are currently going through and then he believes in love a little too much because he's be handing out his heart left and right being emotionally hurt but he also is dealing with the loss of his parents he goes to see a therapist though and regularly talks about his feelings but we also have our normal like young adult kind of miscommunication but it doesn't feel like 
a plot point or a plot device it seems like regular kid regular almost adult stuff too where you just miscommunicate because you're like i don't want to talk about my feelings right now i'm just upset the, these two are trying their best to hold on to love but we already know from that jump to the present that they've broken up that's all i'm gonna say it's so cute so well written you care about both characters so much <laughs> and i love christina for so much for always bringing such good big brain energy to the YA community. I appreciate it. And it's just so, so charming, so fun. Okay, babes, that's it for today's um, video. I did want to announce that I am starting a membership program on YouTube. So if you see the cute little new join button, <laughs> if you click it and join the fam, the real MVPs, you get bonus content. So as you might be able to tell, my room's changed a little bit and I have been vlogging it for my members and they are getting weekly bonus content. So if you are interested in supporting me further, you can join or if you want more content, you can join. I really, really would appreciate it, but obviously it is not necessary. I honestly just appreciate y'all so much. I do want to work towards being a full-time content creator. That's why I have my membership. That's why I'm selling books online. I'm trying to make passive, passive income. I feel like this is very active form of income, but yeah, I'm, I'm doing my best. I want to hit 10K. So if you're not subscribed, consider doing so. If you watch to the end of this video, it means you like me, right? God, I hope so or else that'd be kind of cruel to watch a video for so long and not enjoy my company oh god okay well i highly recommend you check out the romance vlog or the priority of the orange tree vlog or the little life vlog there are lots of vlogs on my channel so if you have not been keeping up make yourself a little playlist maybe i'll make a playlist and pop it here of the reading vlogs of this year i've been putting a lot of effort into them and i think they're really fun and there are more to come so subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out Okay, bye friends. Have a lovely day. Woo.